Hi, uh, my name is Boris, I'm from uh, Mellanox, and uh, I'm going to present uh, this work about uh, UDP segmentation offload. Um, so the motivation for UDP segmentation offload is the quick protocol, which was presented here uh, earlier. Uh, just a quick rec recap, uh, Quick combines TCP, TLS, and HTTP in a single protocol. It's deployed today by Google and Akamai. Uh, a recent paper suggested it's about 10% of internet traffic. Uh, it solves a whole bunch of networking problems, such as head-of-the-line blocking, uh, and most importantly is that it runs over the UDP protocol. Uh, so, a recent patch introduced uh, segmentation uh, for UDP uh, with the new user API, uh, where a user sends a large UDP message uh, with the MSS provided using uh, the UDP segment auxiliary data, as we can see in the uh, code on the right side. Uh, the kernel will segment, segment the large message to MSS-sized uh, packets, uh, including the UDP headers. Um, however, no encapsulation is supported at the moment, so it's just uh, the UDP protocol and that's it. Um, the code here on the right is taken from the uh, testing uh, framework provided by uh, William when he sent the patch. Uh, so it's available for everybody. Um, so UDP segmentation offload. Uh, the problem is that current hardware was not built with UDP segmentation offload in mind. Uh, and once it was introduced, we asked ourselves the question whether it was possible to support it with existing hardware, even though it was not designed uh, with this purpose in mind. Uh, so we started by looking at uh, what existing hardware does when it does segmentation. So uh, at the beginning, it builds a packet by duplicating headers to all packets and then segmenting the payload to multiple packets. Uh, and then uh, segmentation offload kicks in, uh, which increments the IPID for each packet, uh, adjusts the UDP length uh, accordingly, uh, and updates the checksum. Uh, however, in the case of uh, our hardware, uh, we are calculating the UDP checksum using the original UDP checksum provided, uh, the original UDP length provided uh, from software, uh, which in the case of uh, UDP GSO is uh, incorrect. And as a result, we would get uh, packets with the wrong checksum. Uh, so we needed to find some workaround for this problem. And uh, the workaround we chose to use is to split the large UDP uh, GSO packet into two uh, hardware descriptors. One of them is a send LSO. It's uh, the same that sends uh, TCP uh, LSO messages. And another, which uh, is the remaining uh, segment, uh, which has a different length, uh, it is sent uh, using a separate uh, descriptor. Uh, so essentially, two descriptors are used to send uh, single GSO uh, offload requests, and the headers are adjusted uh, accordingly to fit uh, both cases. Uh, however, after submitting the patch, we received some feedback, and uh, we discovered that uh, exactly this functionality is provided by uh, GSO partial, uh, Thanks, uh, Alex and William, for, for GSO partial and UDP segmentation. Um, Is this doing segmentation or fragmentation? U UDP segmentation. It's the okay, recent so patch. What does the IPID have to do with it? it? It needs to be incremented for each uh, segment that is being sent. So Even though it's not fragmentation? No, it's... Do you, do you have an example of how the packets are being split up? Like... So we can see. Uh, I don't have an example within the slide, but it's. Okay, yeah. I guess I can look it up. Yeah. You, well. Um, so those are UDP packets, uh, each uh, with uh, uh, 1,500 uh, bytes. Uh, that's what's being sent to the network, and the IP idea, the IP ID is uh, incremented, even though it's probably not necessary since they don't fragment with this set. 
Um, but this wasn't the problem with the, uh, we were facing when we were implementing this anyway. Um, so we've measured the performance of uh, a single stream uh, UDP between two machines connected back to back. Uh, and we compared uh, UDP, UDP software segmentation, and uh, UDP with the hardware segmentation. In this graph, we see both throughput and CPU utilization. The throughput is represented by the lines with the dots. Uh, so at the top, we have uh, UDP segmentation with hardware. Uh, in the middle, UDP segmentation with software. And the bottom is uh, plain old uh, UDP. Uh, the performance numbers were measured using the uh, self-test scripts that were provided uh, by William in his original patch. And uh, as we can see in this slide, uh, the throughput or the performance improves by 3x uh, when uh, everything is, uh, is equal, meaning when the CPU is equal between uh, UDP segmentation in software and UDP segmentation in hardware, we get 3x improvement in throughput, as is the case with 512 bytes uh, of MSS. Um, but with smaller packets, such as 64-byte packets, we can get up to 10x improvement. Uh, so to summarize, uh, old hardware can still learn new tricks, and UDP segmentation uh, offload is an example uh, of such an offload. Uh, it is supported today with ConnectX4 and ConnectX5 within the MLX5 driver. Uh, a full support, or not just so partial support, but a support using a single descriptor requires only a relatively simple change in hardware. So that could be expected in future hardware as well. Uh, regarding the timeline, so the patch was first introduced on April 14th. Uh, Alex sent an uh, LFC for Intel NICs on May 3rd, and the Mellanox uh, NIC uh, had its patches on June 29th. And uh, now to the discussion. Um, so the way GSO partial works today uh, is that it provides a sort of weird packets down the stack and up to the driver where the IP length and the UDP length uh, are not matching. So the IP total length is uh, 1,500 bytes, where, while the UDP length uh, represents the unsegmented length of, say, uh, 15K, for example. So this mess mismatch, uh, if fixed, would uh, simplify the, the MLX5 driver. Um, maybe Alex would like to comment on that. Yeah, so I was thinking about it. And basically, as far as the length field goes, so our hardware ignores that. We care about the checksum. So you can have the length, but just leave the checksum calculated with the, the uh, partial checksum calculated with the full length. And that would work for us, because we have to reset the length back, and so the easiest way for us to do it would be to use the same approach for both TCP for non-GSO partial. So basically, we, are, we have to do this for regular frames as well, not just GSO partial frames. So if we can use the same approach for standard TSO frames as GSO partial frames, which is we actually just take the actual data length of the SK buff and uh, cancel that out when we do the, the checksum update in order to zero out the length. So if you can leave the checksum using the longer length, mm -hmm. you could update the UDP header field with the shorter length. And then I think it works out because uh, you said your hardware ignores the checksum, whereas we care about that. So it's just, it'd be a trade-off. So it, you just have to move where the multiplication takes place, I think. I, I think this works, yes. We, yeah. We can try that. Yep. And then that should work for both drivers. Sounds reasonable to me. Um, OK. Um, so an, another point to consider is what other offloads could improve uh, UDP and quick performance. So uh, we had uh, some discussion about that uh, in the quick session, uh, but uh, maybe a different suggestion, uh, at least for UDP segmentation. Uh, I know there's been some work uh, with the UDP GRO, and uh, I know BPF was involved. Uh, what I wanted to to consider here is uh, 
maybe you can add some user API for something that's similar to what we have with segmentation, but on the receive side, uh, maybe the user could set some socket option and provide uh, auxiliary data that would allow it to receive large uh, UDP messages regarding, regardless of uh, the packets that uh, uh, were used to, to build those messages. And uh, if combined with something like UDP GLO, uh, as a result, the user would get, with one call, the same buffer that was provided uh, within the kernel, and it should improve uh, the receive side performance uh, of, uh, of Quick. Uh, another point to consider is uh, using uh, the connection idea for RLSS. So uh, the quick guys mentioned that it's less than 1%, so maybe it's uh, not something of interest, but uh, uh, in any way, uh, existing hardware today could parse uh, arbitrary protocols if uh, configured to do so. And the connection idea idea could be parsed if uh, hardware is configured to do it, but we don't have an interface today uh, to ask hardware to define uh, those custom headers and to parse them to provide RSS. So in the future, this is something to, to consider when, uh, when such property would be desired. Um, and finally, the last point is uh, if we are interested in uh, having some of Quick as part of the kernel, uh, specifically, this is uh, crucial to provide uh, crypto offload for Quick. Um, so, if anyone has any comments on that. Uh, Eric, oh, sorry. Uh, I had a question. Be before we go into this, so can we go back to your, your uh, results slide, the one with the graphs? So I'm trying to understand, in the 256 MSS size, CPU utilization is middling, line utilization is middling. What's, who's making whom wait? What's happening on that system? Because I would have expected either you're like maxing out the CPU or you're maxing out a line. What's, you're running a benchmark here, right? Like so. You, you can see at the bottom the the bar charts represent the CPU utilization. So which is very low. Uh, no, it's it's of the total of the machine, and it's a single flow. So th th this is the uh, one hundred. So the core. So you're saying core. actually twenty or I guess twenty percent is actually hundred percent for that particular for that flow. Core. For yeah. that core. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, Eric. Uh, I just have one comment about uh, the, um, the UDP performance on the receive side. Um, I'm not sure there is a use case for quick and uh, high speed flow on the data center uh, versus TCP, you know. Um, we have uh, proper hardware support right now with TCP uh, offloading on the transmit and receive. I'm not sure there is a real case for the UDP quick uh, being uh, offloaded on the receive side. Yeah, I, I wasn't suggesting a hardware offload here. It's just a user API suggestion. A user yeah, but I was, talking about, I was talking about Jiro. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we want to add stuff in Jiro just for our use case, which is basically used by benchmark or not real uh, traffic on the, the data center. OK. Thank you. So in your data threads, so you said it's a single thread test. So my question is, have you tested the performance with multiple threads? And no, we, we just have uh, this test. But uh, it should be similarly scalable uh, as TCP LSO. So I asked because in my experience, testing with uh, multiple uh, segmented uh, UDP, so it tends to be a high number of packet loss. So if we use multiple threads. Yeah, OK. But we should probably do a more thorough evaluation in the future, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so I did check the RFC, and so IPID should only be used in fragmentation. So it probably should not be uh, need need even be mentioned here in IPv6. Well, there wouldn't no, be one. hold on. So. I'll actually explain it real quick. The reason why the IP ID needs to increment is because if there's a risk of middle boxes, say, for example, you have a protocol that doesn't set the DF bit and a middle box decides to fragment the frame, then you run into the problem of collisions in terms of IP IDs. Yeah. So, well, but this, these are just UDP packets in the end, right? So if we're, are we always setting IP ID in all UDP packets now? Yeah. Well, yeah. for all IPv4, yeah. yes. Okay, so then set it for IPv4. Um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that we went, went down that route. So, uh, can you go to the slide where you had the, the uh, options or the futures? Yeah, that one. Um, so I think the, uh, the, the last statement, uh, in general, we could parallel, parallel that to anything that hopefully gets into the kernel to support quick would be the candidate to get into the driver. So the path would be user space kernel driver um, device. So if you stick with that path, so once we start accelerating, so you did end up accelerating GRO um, for quick somehow into the kernel, and then that could possibly become the segue into, into putting into the device, so as long as you maintain that path. And then the accelerations kind of can be different levels, and you could have an evolution towards, you may, maybe you don't need LRO today, but maybe someday you even want it. So that, that's, I think that path would be good. So, um, do I understand this correctly that these, all these segments will hit as uh, uh, consec <laughs> consecutive packets going out of the NIC? There's no possibility to paste them or anything after that? Uh, yeah, if pacing is uploaded to hardware, then it could definitely be paced. Okay. Otherwise, no. Yeah, okay. Um, how strict is the size, same size things for LSO? Can you work around it, so to say, by, I mean, writing buffers of the same size, but not actually filling them with data? I, I'm not sure I understand the question. So, um, different from, I mean, if you're generating quick packets, they are not necessarily as, as common or fixed sized as uh, for other usages, so. Well, you can add padding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's it's not supported with the hardware. Sorry. Yeah. Magnus, I was going. Oh, this is on. Yeah, uh, Magnus, I was going to say that um, in practice, especially if you can get uh, pacing offload working, or if you have a very high bandwidth connection, yeah. it's pretty easy to make sure all your packets are full sized. Yeah. So we we have a bunch of code that um, is about to land that uses the new API, and it was pretty painless overall. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you.